Uh, good morning, all the delegates. Uh, we are entering into the third day of this uh, workshop, and I believe that you have enjoyed the. Okay, you enjoyed the the pleasure and the, the, the culture as well as the the environment of Trishur. How many are coming for to the Kerala state for the first day? How many? Okay. First time. Okay. I saw a many familiar face in this uh, gathering because uh, Shashi used to come to uh, our hospital for the management as well as getting the disease cured by the animals. Actually, I find a cross-section of India. Therefore, yesterday, Madam has told the mini India assembled here in, the, in, this, in this auditorium. Anyway, you are fortunate to be a part of this workshop because, you know, it is a fortunate thing, you and I am uh, <coughs> living this world. Means, you know, yesterday you have, you have, you have witnessed uh, the, the reproductive uh, conditions of her dogs. You have seen an ovum and a sperm, the shape of an ovum and sperm. It is also equivalent to the human being that uh, we are a product of the ovum and sperm of our parents. Is it not? But that has happened because of the union years back. But the probability of that union was 1 in 400 quadrillion. You rem remember that? You <laughs> imagine that. 1 in 400 quadrillion means how many numbers? See, you can see, suppose you put a coin in the, in the, the floor, the probability of getting a head and tail is 50%, is it not 50%? But here, the probability is 1 in 400 quadrillion. That means we put 26,800 zero just behind 1. That is a number. That's why we are coming into the universe. It's a very, very good, fortunate uh, uh, reason. That's why we are here. You have become trainers. I have become the professor. And somebody has become the DGP. Like that. All are, they are all ro their roles to play. But I consider that your role in the police force is very, very important. You are maintaining a companion. Hmm? A companion is our patient. So to me, when I begin with this topic, the first stage is related to not only the companion as well as the trainer also. That's very important. With regard to dealing a, a species which has got a lot of uh, attacking behavior as well as that their behavior is very very docile also. See, I have told you I have seen many familiar figures. We have got we provide uh, our clinical service in our hospitals as well as to the police dog and the police of uh, the dogs of CASF in Cochin International Airport. And uh, as Dr. Sudhi has told, we have, a, we have got a, a state-of-the-art teaching veterinary clinical complex to extend our service uh, to the dogs of police force and also to the, <coughs> for the teaching of our graduates and postgraduates. And we have NABL accredited laboratories. That's also our uh, uh, resource. So many times, police department comes to us to, to perform investigations and evidence for getting their, uh, their supporting documents for their, their <coughs> case studies. So I believe that your trainees are coming from different parts of India. And uh, you are speaking different language. Somebody was telling me they are not able to follow the language here. Well, anyway, 
you speak and when you when you go to a place where you can't speak uh, openly that you make it makes you uncomfortable is it not if for a training suppose you go for a training but not in a position to speak properly not able to hear the lecture properly in the, in the same language but there is a barrier between you and other uh, other uh, fellow delegates but you know your companion the dog they have no barrier they have no barrier in communication suppose you a dog from the odisha comes here they can communicate each other because there is no barrier because they are speaking only a universal language only only human being speaks a different language there are about 5000 languages available all over the world but human being speaks only the the different language but our animals speak only universal language so that is the difference between you as well as the your companion so with this uh, introduction i would like to start my presentation this uh, first aid in animals as well as first aid in the human being and also what are the different steps to be taken so first aid i in the first part of the first aid i have concentrating more, more on the first aid to be or first of first of what are the normal things you have to undergo or you have to make bear in mind that is you know suppose you want to correct a, a wound so suppose to treat a wound what give a first aid wound you must know what is a wound was you want to correct a fracture or say give a support to a animal for a animal suffering from fracture you know what is a fracture that's all so normal thing you have to <coughs> make sure in an animal then you go for the correction of just the form of first aid so first and immediate assistance first and immediate assistance we want to uh, any living being suffering from either a minor or serious illness or injury with care to <coughs> preserve their life prevent the condition from worsening and also to promote the recovery that is also important because preserve the life means suppose your patient entering into a, a, in a endangered situation a very difficult situation you have to save the animal so this is very precious the life of a dog is very precious for you in a police force so you have to recover from the condition which has which is going to endanger that animal so that is the most most important point of first aid now see there are five aims so first aid that includes uh, dealing with the cuts what is injury what burns or slash injuries that is happened on the body of a, your animal that is suppose an injury has taken place how to how to manage if the injury is having have a higher higher seriousness or higher gravity what to do that way you have to deal such a injury another is injury to the eye is very important suppose uh, an injury when i means you cannot uh, see the objects for a, a certain period of time that cause a cloudiness over the or the eye the vision of the animal is lost for a certain period till the healing process completed you know vision in an animal is quite quite important as you if you suppose you see a, a tree you are standing a tree is seen you can assess the height of a tree but in a dog suppose it reaches a tree it is thinking that it is a, a huge structure because, because according to their the level of their eye the object that is very small to the to us may be uh, visualized by them as a very large structure so an importance of eye is is a say <coughs> a one factor for an animal like i i have seen many animals which has no eye many animals with dogs but they are living why they don't have any 
any bystander to uh, to to, to uh, support them. So they can take the food, they can do all the urination, defect, everything they can do. But there is a sixth sense for the animal, like a, a dog. So eyes are very important for a dog also. Then fractures. Our fractures are very common and it's a very running animal that can also enter into any damage of their body parts. When they are doing duty also, they may get across, may come across with fractures or sprains or and strain of joint. And if they are given, they offered some food material, it's very, very, very bulky. You've seen during the demonstration of the uh, narcotic sex uh, detection, they were offering a ball to the animal, is it not? Sometime in pursuit of getting that ball, it may go into the esophagus of the animal. So vagus is the, the, the pipe which transport the food materials from the mouth to the stomach. That may cause choking, that obstruction of the esophagus sometimes. But you think that the, the capacity of a dog's esophagus is large. It can accommodate a large pieces of meat. It can elastic, that, that because of elasticity of that esophagus. But it will not cause much obstruction. But if that object is having a lot of uh, projections like bones that may try to, that may get lodged in the esophagus, leading to asphyxia, obstruction of trachea. Because esophagus is situated, it is located near the trachea, that is a wind pipe through which we are respiring. So it may cause obstruction to the trachea, leading to Asphyxia means absence of respiration, leading to collapse. That is also another condition. And uh, <coughs> excessive bleeding, that is another condition usually come across with uh, this type of uh, working dogs. So that has to be identified and should be given first aid before it, the animal is brought to the hospital for further uh, expert treatment. Next is helping unconscious patients. So these are all uh, important aims of the first aid. Now, what is the primary objective of the first aid when assisting the dog during an emergency situation? Suppose the dogs are taken outside. They are chasing the thieves. They may come across with a lot of objects. But in, <coughs> in the course of the travel, the persons also get injured. That means your safety is very important. Very important, your safety. Because you may be endangering your life in, in the process of saving your animal. Or you will not allow others to save the animal. During that period, you may come across with a lot of danger. For example, suppose you are moving to a place where there is flood or suppose electric wire is in the, in the, in the area of the, on the locality where the dogs are allowed to enter, you may come across with a lot of accidents. Electric shock may take place. So your safety is also very important than the safety as well as the, the security of your uh, the companion. So when you reach such locations, you think about avoid yourself or injury to the person yours like uh, because animals when you, when you approach in such situation they are nervous, anxious and possibility of injuring their, their body itself and their behavior cannot be predicted because in an emergency situation uh, they behave un in an unpredictable manner. So approaching such animals is very dangerous as far as the uh, trainer is concerned. So they will be nervous and unpredictable habits as well as dangerous. So it is important to learn how the dog can physically can be physically injured and that should be successfully avoided injuries through these animals. 
and they can also bite you. When you approach these animals, they can bite you. That bite can cause crushing injury. You can, they can bite on, their, on your hand. That can cause crushing injury. In that situation, the, the bones of the, the hand may be broken. Or they can scratch, causing skin injury. Or both bites and scratch can lead to bleeding and infection. So I have got an experience with uh, other uh, people when I am asking the police department. They, they are telling that the thieves are very scared of dogs because they, they are thinking that the bite of dog is very painful. One reason. Another is their fear is they may contract rabies. These are the two, two situations. They are very scared of dogs. So what they will do is uh, during the uh, night time, they will take, uh, these will take human feces. They will deposit in some far corner of that yard. So this human feces is attracted by the dogs so that they can enter through the back door of the house. That is their trick. But if they see some large pack of dogs in the yard, they will be very they will be very scared of dog because of the bite. So bite, when you get a bite from your, for you, it's very painful. We have got a lot of bites during our uh, uh, hospital practice. Even an anesthetized animal has got bitten me here. It's very, very painful. So you will get also all this type of uh, bite when you, <coughs> when you are not careful in attending this type of talks. Now, you have to survey the situation. Suppose you are <coughs> allotted duty to an <coughs> for an out, a, a, a outdoor duty. Survey the situation and uh, you can see a lot of traffic and downed power lines, hazardous materials on the ground as well as dangerous or venomous wildlife. For example, suppose you uh, follow the dog into wild in search of a uh, evidence, such of a thief, there is chance for all this type of uh, injuries that is likely to happen in your personal <coughs> belongings as well as in your body. Now, how to approach an injured uh, animal? So when you are approaching an animal, as you have already uh, got uh, information from the Dr. Sudhish Nair's first presentation, so very slowly you have to approach the animal, very slowly, approach very softly so as to avoid upsetting the animal, an injured animal, lower your body so that you are not towering over them because if you are standing on this side, they will think that it's a very huge structure is located to his body. So they will be scared of us. structures. Standing at full height could be interpreted as a threat. That's why don't stand behind this animal. You have to kneel down. Do not make direct eye contact with the animal or stare the animal directly. That is also important when you are approaching these animals. So <coughs> Again, you survey the animal, so keep an eye on the animal's posture and expression, face, ears, tail, fur and body. All this has been covered. Allow the animal to smell the back of your hand. The reason has been already uh, revealed to you in the first presentation. So watch the animal carefully for the reactions. What, the, the distant, what is the ultimate uh, reaction of this animal when you are reaching them? And never make any cuke or sudden movements that may upset the animal. So these are the things to be taken into consideration when you are approaching a, a wounded or a, an animal which is uh, suffering from pain. Now, 
They make sure the body languages like growling, scare, standing or, or back up as well as shoulders, snarling, tail may be wagging or ears may be straight and back. So these are the approaches when you are <coughs> allowed to enter to their closeness. They may also certain behavior such as submission. Submission means the dog crouches and assumes a submissive posture, lays down and uh, belly exposed. He already been taught, already been covered in the first uh, sensation. They may urinate and lick you profusely. When they become friendly, and a dog that is fearful becomes submissive and they may bite also if you are forcing the situations. If you are forcing the animal to get away from that area, they may also bite you. So these are the things to be noted when you survey the situations of the area of the of the area of the <coughs> spot. How to handle the animals? What are the requirements? Suppose you want to handle an animal, you require a gloves. Very important gloves. So thick gloves may cause uh, loss of dexterity. What is dexterity? Laxidity. Suppose you want to hold an animal, you must be able to turn your fingers. That means, according to your will, the finger should act. Stemmed as Kaivada Kanakvari. Dexterity, dexterity, manual dexterity. See, the qualities of a surgeon is, you know, we used to say, uh, one quality of surgeon is eagle's eye. Eagle's eye means a clear vision, a sharp vision. Another is lion's heart. The courage, like just like a lion. And the third quality is a lady's finger. Lady's finger means lady's finger, you know. That's how I told you that manual dexterity. Don't think that the old surgeon should have the finger of a lady's. But there is a manual dexterity so that you can perform this procedure without much difficulty. So if you wear thick gloves, this dexterity is lost. Thick gloves, as you see, some the, 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 the police, story, the electric uh, KSC board person, they will come to remove the, 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 the fuse with the help of a protective uh, uh, gloves. He said, no, that is too thick. They cannot uh, uh, work their <coughs> finger very easily. But if you use very thin gloves, thin gloves like uh, latex or vinyl gloves, such is the uh, most important uh, ideal material for, to use uh, by yourself for uh, handling the dogs. Next is leashes. The leashes should be nylon or leather or canvas. Do not use a chain link for uh, handling these animals. And when you are making a leash, make a large loop by passing. A large loop by pass. By, you may be knowing what is leash. So always used along with the for this dog. A large loop by passing the snap connector and uh, at the end and through the loop of the handle. And while standing behind the animal, try to drop it over the head <coughs> and let it come to the neck. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. <coughs> uh, very one important announcement, those who have not registered, have to register, get it done within 10 minutes. If you have not registered with me, who have joined the time, I mean, second day, join who have two, three people. So anybody from North India or that other parts of the state, other part of the country who has came and not registered, please register within 10 minutes because the certificates has to be signed by the authorities. Okay, please sir, continue. Thank you. The lace should be leather, nylon, and canvas. Do not use a chain link and make a large loop. The procedure is make a large loop at one end of the loop, the, 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 the leash, and uh, through that you take the loop of the handle, uh, loop of the handle, and while standing just behind the animal, throw it over the head, make it come around the neck, and tighten it. Actually, this workshop is meant for an activity. But there is no animal to, to show all these things. I am just giving me an, an action also.
So next is muscle, muscling the animal. See there are two muscles in an animal. That is one is we are using the a material for controlling the mouth of an animal. Another is this area is also termed as muscle in an animal. Muscle. Same spelling. So dog can be controlled by a muscle. So very important thing you have to bear in mind when you put a muscle. So actually, this muscle, the purpose of muscle is to control the jaws of the animal. Because uh, many people, many a time you are coming to our hospital, you will say that no, the animal is very, very fine. It will not bite. But because of fear, because lot of students over there, they will be scared of this animal. But we will make the students muscle the animal before handling. That's a very important thing. So, what is the purpose of muscle? Control the opening of the animal, opening of this. Uh, jaws of the animal but you must be taken into consideration putting a muscle to an animal which has got a tendency to vomit or coughing and having <coughs> difficulty in breathing it's very difficult very 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 it's not a reliable condition or it's an anticipated condition because many instances it has happened you will say the owners to muscle the animal they will think that oh, this, is, this is very quite friendly to me. doctor. He is very friendly to me. It will not bite. But suppose you put the muscle, they will start increasing the respiration. They will start salivation coming out. That may cause swallowing into the esophagus or into the trachea. That may reach into a, an asphyxia condition. Once uh, a, an accident happened into, in, the, in my hospital, and one doctor came. To, for a for a uh, examination, it was a, a, a boxer dog. You know, boxer dog. The the, the, the face, the, the 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 anterior part is very very shorter. Somehow we have suggested uh, as part of investigation, we suggested radiography. So she was uh, uh, allowed to put the muscle, the animal. By the time. And the electricity, the power was gone. You could not take the X-ray. So the radiographer told her, hey, "Madam, you remove that muscle." So he told that it is okay; it will not uh, do any harm, will not <coughs> causing any doing harm. But what happened? You know, the animal, because of his travel from Perindalmanna, he is vomited. So because the muscle was not at all loosened, the entire vomitus came into the mouth, then it has gone into the trachea that collapsed in the afternoon. So think that if the animal has a tendency to vomit, don't put the muscle in your daily practice. So, but <coughs> everybody has the belief that suppose you put a muscle in a dog, whether it will cause, in, in a normal dog, whether it will cause any obstruction to the nasal passage. No, because this area is a lot of bony structure. Not in the case of our nose, it is very cartilage, not brawny structure. So it will not cause any obstruction to the air passage. That is the advantage in the case of a, a dog. Use only always a soft nylon leather. There are pre-made muscles available for dogs and cats in the in the ready-made muscles are available. But, but if you want a very cheap muscle, you can use this technique. <coughs> So this take a, 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 a tape at having a cent one centimeter width, a length of 18 inch, and <coughs> make a beginning of a knot into a loop that can be replaced, that can be placed over the animal's nose. And while putting that knot, that give enough space between you and the animal's mouth so that the animal can turn you and bite you, can't you and bite you. That's all. But you have to make a safer distance in front of the animals so that you are doing all the procedure in front of the animal. I shall show you the procedure in the next slide. See, in this first a loop is prepared. You may be knowing what. Is it not? 
Anybody knows this procedure? Putting a mus muscle? And my opinion is you have to, uh, you have to make the animal uh, acquainted with the putting a muscle, even from its uh, puppyhood. So that whenever you want to take to a hospital, suppose the animal is scared of coming to hospital and it is not allowing any examination by the doctors. So putting a muscle is very difficult. So try to do this procedure as, the, as early as in the puppy stage so that you will be accustomed to the muscle procedure, muscling procedure. So that's very important. So by the time you, you prepare a loop and if you enter into the mouth, the animal open the mouth and in that occasion it will be holding only one jaw. That is a mistake usually committed by many of, many of the people. So try to close the mouth, put the muscle and uh, these are the step, different step by which you take it around the jaw and bring it lower and tighten it and take it back to the <coughs> of the ears, sorry, of the ears as well as and tie a knot which can be removed easily. What's the point? In times of any any vomiting by the animal, you have to remove it easily. That's why you put a, don't put a any 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 <coughs> full knot, any loose knot, so that you can remove it very easily. That is the muscling procedure. So with this uh, procedure, animal can be controlled maximum for its examinations. Then restraint of the animal this is very important. How to take the dog from an area? Stand or kneel with your chest at dog's side. Place forearm under the dog's neck and bring the arm up other the other side of the neck. Lock your forearm under your head and place the arm over the belly or over this uh, rice chest. This is one method of controlling a very very small dog <laughs> that can be used for large dogs also. Suppose the dog is very larger or having a, high, a weight of 25 pounds or more than that. So you can carry the dog in your arms also. The small dog, they can be <coughs> carried in your arm with the four limbs in front of the arms and place your hand around the dog's foreleg. Two or three fingers between the legs. Hold the leg as you walk and keep the injured area very close to your body. That's very important. Suppose you are carrying the dog in your hand, the injured part should be very close to your body. That's a, that gives a, a, a feeling of safe, a safety to the animal. In case of a larger animal, place one arm under the, around the neck or place the other behind the rear leg or hind leg or under the belly if you suspect any hind limb injury. Suppose you uh, suspect an injury of the hind limb and you have, you have to hold the head hold the head with the other hand and with the second hand hold the hind lip so that it will not be moving, not creating any form of pain to the animal. Now there are certain vital signs you have to see in an animal. Vital signs such as uh, uh, heart rate, respiration, temperature, these are the vital signs to be looked into. Daily you have to look into the heart rate, pulse rate and uh, and temperature is very important to, so that we can find out any deviation the normal thing. I shall tell you the normal uh, <coughs> values here. In a dog, the normal value of a heart rate is 60 to 100 per minute. 60 to 100 per minute because in a smaller animal, a young pup, the rate may be very large. The range is even in such a way that in a, in a pup, the rate may be 100, near 100, more than 100, because their activity, metabolic rate is very, very high. Because of that, the rate may be very high also in the case of a <coughs> young animals. And the heart, <coughs> heartbeat can be felt on the left side of the chest, just behind the angle of the leg, first floor leg. There is a picture given where you can feel the heart rate. And when you count the heart rate, you have to take, take into consideration. There are two beats, two beats. That is, one is a beat of uh, contraction. That is the contraction of the first chamber. And next is the contraction of the lower chamber. So 
these two beats are completing a heart rate. But don't think that these two beats should not be counted together. So to complete this beat together, that is one beat. You got the point? So if you count like this, the heart rate may be 200. Okay. Another is you can also feel the pulse. Pulse can be felt onto the forelimb, just behind the forelimb, above the paw. You just feel it. Just keep the finger very lightly so that you can feel the pulse there. Pulse there because pulse is usually felt on an artery. There is an artery at that area that can be felt <coughs> very clear. And breath also, I have told you why, one of the vital signs is breath, breath by the animal or breathing by the animal. This is 10 to 30 breaths per minute. And during panting, the breathing may be increased to 200. Panting, possibly after a, an exercise, the animal may be having a, a breathing of uh, 200 uh, times. So how will you assess, how will you count the breath in a dog? Anyway, any method? I will you count your breath? By the movement of the chest. Hmm? Suppose you observe in a person, his, his chest movement may be counted per minute. That is 10 to 20 breath. You, count, you, you see the, observe the body of an animal where how it expands and it relaxes like that. There are ways like this, you can count the breath by the air, exhaled air, but it is very difficult. Only if you keep a, 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 a plate or a, a surface, or you keep a finger, if you keep a, a palm near the, near the nostril, you can find out. But the best way is, see the, ex, the, the expansion and relaxation of the chest area. That is a method by which you can <coughs> find out the breath. Now, temperature. So, a temperature or thermometer is also a must in a, in a, a dog's cat team. So you, have to cut, you have to count the, or you have to record the temperature when the animal is deviating from its a, a normal behavior. It's not taking food, not having an interest to exercise. You have to suspect something wrong with this animal. So you have to you know, check that the temperature can is, is increased or or lowered. So one method is introducing a, therm a thermometer into the rectum of a, an animal, rectum of a dog. Nowadays, uh, a lot of uh, uh, digital thermometer is available. In the in a, in a, in a olden days, we have got a thermometer with a mercury. It's very difficult to identify the marking. The temperature is recorded. So in a digital thermometer, it should be introduced into the rectum of a, a dog. So that's also important for the procedure. Don't introduce the, the temperature, the, 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 the tip of the thermometer into the uh, rectum as, as such. It should be lubricated first. Because if you introduce the, the thermometer without lubricant, that may cause irritation to the rectum. That is also a point where <coughs> animal starts increasing respiration. Increasing respiration when you introduce something into the rectum. So whatever object introducing into the rectum, it should be very smooth. It should not cause any injury, irritation into the rectum, so that the animal. Be, so during the process of uh, introduction, animal starts respiration. According to the respiration, heart rate rate increases. So you may be recording a, a false value. So very smooth introduction is required to to record the the tip of the thermometer into the rectum. So these are the procedures of uh, recording the vital signs in the animal. The normal temperature of uh, the dog is 100 to one, <coughs> 102 point degree Fahrenheit. This is the normal temperature of a, a dog. If the temperature will go above that, above the 102.28 or if it goes 
below 100 there is a deviation in their normal vital sign but think that after exercise if you record the temperature it may be high this is because of activity of heart it supplies blood to all the structures that may also cause increase in temperature but we are quite uh, <coughs> quite animal very calm animal you record the temperature so recording the temperature is also very important it should be recorded only in the morning time so that animal is calm it is not exposed to any unnatural surrounding it is not exposed to uh, <coughs> unfamiliar individual like that Another is color of mucous membrane that has already been covered in the previous uh, in the, in the diseases of animals. Color of mucous membrane is a pale pink. That is the pale pink is the structure. So why the color is usually <coughs> coming to uh, say having the pale pink was mucous membrane. The oral uh, the, the, the cavity the, the mouth cavity has got what a mucosal surface. If the Functioning of the heart of an animal is proper. Functioning means it will <coughs> pump the blood to all the parts of the body. The heart is the structure or the organ in the body. It will pump blood to different organs for its function. It pumps to the brain. It pumps blood to the liver. Pumps blood to the kidney. It pumps blood to the heart also. Heart is pumping blood to the heart also. That's why some person is uh, getting a heart attack. Hmm? That means the circulation to the heart is blocked. So the heart cannot function properly as in the previous stage. So that's why heart, heart got a lot of function. It pumps blood. So because of this pumping of blood, the mucous membrane of the animal may be looking very pale or pale rosy structure. That is normal pumping. If any deviation in the pumping or if any deviation in the components of the blood, like usually we say when you when you go to a, a doctor after seeing the eye, he will say you, you, you don't have any blood. They will say like that. If the, the, if the, the eye is very white, turning to white, you don't have any blood. That is not, not loss of blood, it's a loss of Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the, the unit that indicates the, the oxygenation taking place in the body, in the, in the, in the heart, also, in the lungs also. So lung oxygen, how oxygen is getting into the body? By way of respiration. If you respire the air, the oxygen is enters into the lungs. From that, the, all, the, all the blood vessels reaching the lung absorb oxygen. So this oxygen is entering to all parts of the body for its nutrition. So this, when the blood is having low oxygen, you may look like a, a pale area on the mucous membrane. So this is the mucous membrane, right? but in the lower picture, you can see the mucous membrane is yellow, yellowish color, because maybe a, a damage of the liver. Liver is causing, all, doing all the type of uh, <coughs> detoxification, whatever toxin, whatever poisons are taken in by the animal or a patient or a human being, the liver is detoxifying. Suppose that the quantity of the toxin is large, the liver is also affected. Yesterday you have told, you have got the information about a disease caused by a leptospira. Leptospira, leptospirosis, the vaccination is done for this animal. To prevent the condition, leptospira elipani, written down elipani. So in, in, in leptospira also there is chance for the condition affecting the liver, all forms of liver damage. It also damages the kidney. Kidney is another organ in the body. To me, the best organ in the body is kidney. Why? Yes. It removes all the waste products. All the waste in the body is removed by the kidney. Because I consider kidney as a, a great organ. That's why we have two kidneys. If one kidney fails, other will take over the function. Because normally in a human being or an animal, you need only one third of a kidney. 
But if that portion is damaged, the next one third will take over the function. Likewise, in the entire lifespan of an individual, the kidney will be functioning properly. So if the kidney is shut down, this function, all the impurities may accumulate. Just like wastes are uh, <laughs> accumulated in the street where the stray dogs are um, thriving. Okay. So that is the main problem for stri stri uh, the, the increase in the stray dog population. So kidneys <coughs> is also another important organ. So you have to take in care of the color of mucous membrane is uh, affected by different forms of disease. But you have to think about what is the normal color of the kit, the, the mucous membrane in a dog. Now another uh, important factor you have to take into consideration capillary refill time. Because there are three types of blood vessels. The blood is flowing in the body in three types of vessels. One vessel is known as artery. So this vessel is taking the blood from the heart to the whole organs. Another vessel is vein. You might have heard about in the early school classes, vein, which bring the blood from the organs to the heart. And third one is capillary. This capillary is situated in between artery and vein in the different structures. So what happens, you know, the flow of blood through the capillary is very, very slow. The fastest moving vessel is, blood vessel is artery. The blood flow is very, very fast because of the pumping of the heart, blood moves very, very fast. But in return, the flow of the blood is very, very slow. So if, the, if, you, if you see the mucous membrane, there are a lot of capillaries on this, on this structure. Suppose you press that area, you will be seeing that that same area will be having less amount of pale area, pale, paleness or pink area. If you release it, slowly that area comes into the previous color. So that is the technique by which um, measuring the capillary refilling time refilling time. That also in an animal the capillary refilling is very important especially in the case of suppose a, a, a dog is suffering from dehydration. Dehydration means loss of water from the body. It can take place in different conditions like a continuous diarrhea in an animal, a continuous vomiting. So in vomiting as well as diarrhea whatever water the, the body is lost. So all these conditions may result in delay in the refilling of the capillary. So capillary refilling is normally one to two seconds. If you press that area, or release the finger, within one to two seconds, it has to come to the normal color. If it is delayed, that indicates a degree of dehydration in an animal. That is the measurement. Hydration, I have already told you, it should go back into place by immediate one to second. This is the method by which hydration in an animal. Suppose the animal is dehydrated. Dehydrated means loss of water. Continuously, uh, uh, animal is having a condition leading to dehydration. They will be affected by dehydration more than the, young, than the elder people because their surface area is very less to compensate the body fluid that is lost from the body. So if you take a skin like this on the body of an animal, it will remain there in this position. The body is dehydrated. In a normal way, because of the elasticity of the skin, it will recede back. But in dehydration, it will stay like this for a longer time time for example one uh, three to five seconds may remain there so this is another indication that the animal is dehydrated <coughs> now we come to the, the proper first aid in this that, now it is clear all the normal things to be noted in an animal now how to do the first aid you have to see recognize that emergency first the animal may be coming across with different types of emergency. One is 
a trauma. Trauma means any injury. It may be due to a fall or a gunshot or a automobile accident <coughs> or while running it may get into a fracture also. So all this type of trauma, generally trauma is an injury, any form of injury is termed as a trauma. Another condition is difficult breathing. It's another situation you have to interfere. Seizures, just like epilepsy, all this type of seizures may develop in an animal. Excessive bleeding, excessive bleeding that cannot be stopped by applying pressure. So immediately, suppose you get an injury in, the, in your finger, what is your response? Injury on the finger. Hmm? Ah, you will apply pressure, digital pressure, just termed as digital pressure. Suppose even after digital pressure it is not stopped, what will you do? No, tie a cloth, a cloth around it so that it will get some degree of pressure. But with the digital pressure, the, the pressure applied is very, very less. But if you apply a bandage, so the pressure will be continuous. Okay, so these are the term <coughs> technique to be used. Then lameness after a fall may be due to a, a sprain or a fracture or <coughs> any form of strain of the ligaments, snake bites, heat stroke, poisoning, shock, burn, drowning in water, unconsciousness after exercise and others. These are the important area we have to interfere in the form of a, a, a first aid. Now, when you are <coughs> uh, you planning a first aid, you must know, uh, you must survey the animal, the victim also, and to find out uh, different methods by which this first aid can be uh, executed in a particular individual. First of all, there is a, 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 a short form ABC. ABC for CPR. CPR is C for cardio, P for pulmonary, and R for resuscitation. Cardiac means related to heart. Pulmonary means lung. Resuscitation means stimulating, reinstating, reinstating, recovering that particular conditions related to the organs. So A means airway. Airway means the airway means the nose to the trachea, which, com which communicates, which, uh, which transfer the air into the lungs. Airway means the, from the nose up to the level of trachea into the lungs. And next, you want to find out whether that airway is patent, means opened, whether that airway has got any obstruction. You have to find out first. And breathing, breathing, whether the animal is breathing, how to assess breathing? I already told you, movement of the chest cage, ribs, or you can also feel the, the inspirations or expiration on the, the, lip, the palm of your hand. Another is circulation, you have to identify whether circulation is seen in the animal. How to see that circulation? Feel the heartbeat and feel the pulse rate. So these are the ABCs of a, a saving an animal. ABCs of a saving an animal. Now another comes the mucous membrane. I already explained in the previous slide. Capillary refill time, normal you must know. And any evidence of bleeding and also animal's level of consciousness. These are the important things to be surveyed in a victim which is requiring a first aid. So I have told you CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation where it's a method to treat an animal that is not breathing or has no heartbeat. It involves a rescue breathing 
that is mouth nose mouth nose means mouth of the individual and nose of the dog the abc's or basic principles of uh, airway breathing and must be followed in any form of cardio pulmonary resuscitation suppose if you are doing or cpr cardio pulmonary resuscitation the animal is not at all improving it is not because of your uh, expertise but it may be the condition of the animal that is not able to come back to the normal situation so how to establish the airway this is very important establishing the airway checks to see if the throat and mouth are clear of foreign bodies if the foreign bodies in the mouth is causing any obstruction to the passage of air you have to remove that foreign body and clear the airway gently tilting the head back and extend the neck you got the point hold on the head tilting the animal and extend the neck and pull the tongue between the two teeth the two teeth the canine teeth pull the tongue so that because of the stimulus elicited by way of pulling the tongue you can remove the whatever object present in the mouth cavity use your finger to remove any material or liquid from the airway so do not put your finger into the mouth of a conscious animal it may bite you so in a unconscious animal it is possible to do all this procedure so in a, in a, in a vivek animal it is very difficult to do all this procedure breathing the animal is breathing let them continue their own if not do the following in case of medium or large animal seal the animal's mouth and lips and by placing your hand around and gently hold the muscles closed just like this and place your mouth over the animal's nose forcefully exhale that means take hair from the animal's nose and give four to five breath rapidly to the airway after keeping the mouth closed give four to five breaths to the animal and continue up to 20 minutes 10 to 20 minutes like that so that animal can take the air into the lungs so that lungs can expand it can supply oxygen to the heart so that heart can function normal that is the main objective of giving breath to this animal so use the following breath rate small dogs 20 to 30 breaths per minute in case of medium dogs 20 breaths per minute while doing cardio pulmonary resuscitation but if you have any access for an oxygen but it is not i think this not available in a, a dog cart in the case of our hospital we do connect the animals to oxygen cylinders by way of mask also but how to improve the pulse in an animal if no pulse or no detectable heartbeat perform chest compression that's another method chest compression lay the animal on its right side kneel next to the animals with chest facing you place one of your hands over the animal's rib at point where elbow touches the that is the above the heart and place other hand on the first the importance is that if you are compressing the chest with one hand this not giving a, a firm force but if you place another hand above one it will be giving a, a good effort so the, to compress the heart so you have to compress the heart 1 2 3 4 5 and stop it allow the animal to breathe for one breath so every breath after every breath give 1 2 3 4 5 compression so while compressing you should not be too much pressure just the the the, the chest should <coughs> lower down for a, for a for a distance of half to 1 inch because there are a lot of uh, people doing all this compression by the time animal is surviving it may getting a fracture of ribs should not do such pressures on the chest a, a gentle pressure at the same time it has to stimulate the heart to function that is the main purpose of doing chest compression 
So these are all compression medium size lab. We can also compress with the, your hand and large animals also compress with the, <coughs> your hand and each compression for each three to two to three compression you have to release for the breath to take place. And giant dogs also you have to compress ten compressions for each breath. That means after each breath give ten compression because according to the weight of the animal the number of compression is also increased. In a smaller dog you require only one five compression. If you go for a larger breed, it would be a ten compressions per breath of an animal. Now another condition that is usually come across in the in the animal is shock. It is not a condition like uh, shock, you know, you might have heard, what is shock? It's not electric shock. Hmm? It's a medical term in case of uh, <coughs> animals as well as human being. Shock means no. Suppose uh, if an animal is got an injury and it is bleeding, bleeding continuously taking place, finally a, 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 a certain a period of a certain amount of blood is lost. For example, in case of head injuries, in an automobile accident, bleeding takes place. So bleeding, suppose bleeding is taking place, the whatever amount of blood available in the heart or in the circulation is lost. Whatever amount is lost. So the amount available for further circulation in the body is depleted or lowered. So, the, all the organs in the body require a lot of blood from the heart for its normal functioning. But if the level of blood, if the amount of blood is lowered, all the functioning of the structures are, or the organs are lowered. Normal function is not taking place. So a situation may reach a, a, a delay in functioning of the organ. That is termed as shock. Shock in medical term. So here in shock also you can see increased heart rate, pulse may be bounding, say very larger pulses, and delayed capillary rate. I have told you about the capillary refill time, delay in the returning of the color. Normally the color is returning in how many seconds? Two seconds. Suppose you measure capillary refill time on the oral cavity, on the mouth cavity, on the mucous membrane. If you press there and release it, it will come in two seconds. In case of shock, it will delay, it may go up to five or six seconds because of very less amount of blood in the blood vessels. So decreased capillary refill time, decreased body temperature because blood is very lowered in the entire body. So blood cannot reach all the body structures to give the normal temperature. So delayed capillary refill and the lowered body temperature is seen in such situations. So in septic shock, that is a condition usually come across in case of infections. That is a, a medical condition. So that is a, <coughs> in case of septic shock, the animal is suffering from many type of infection that may result in shock also. So these are the symptoms noticed. So in case of shock, suppose the, bleed, uh, the shock is due to bleeding, you have to control the bleeding. That is the most important thing. Control the bleeding, the source of bleeding. You have to find out the bleeding point. You have to control it and allow the animals to uh, reach, uh, get the expert veterinary support. Uh, reaching the animal with the animal to the veterinary hospital for getting the further expert support. Though this is the end stage of shock where the, if you go on doing all this, even if you do the support, cardiopulmonary support, all this, uh, all this procedure may be in vain because heart cannot function properly because of very loss of blood. That's why, see suppose blood is remain, is containing in the heart, heart can function. That is stimulus for the heart. If blood reaches the heart, it will stimulate the heart to function properly. That is a that is a, that's, that's the purpose of a that's the heart heart the main organ of the body as a heart. You might have heard about you are getting blood pressure, is it not? Pressure. Hmm? 
what does what is the reason for the blood pressure in an, in, an, in a normal animal or normal individual what is the reason for normal blood pressure usually it is a 120 to 80 that is the blood pressure maintaining blood pressure in a in an individual is very important other than other diseases pressure is important that's why you are sitting here if the pressure is very high you may feel headache or the pressure is lowered you may feel con unconscious is it not why a pressure is maintained because it has to function all the organs a pressure is so because with that pressure it has to raise it has to pump the blood different organs it has to pump the blood into different organs like uh, brain uh, liver heart heart itself and also in the, into the, the kidney also different and and the gi tract alimentary tract for the structures which digest the food material all these organs will have to function properly with a supply of blood for that a minimum level is of blood pressure is maintained suppose blood pressure increasing what happens it may go into the brain there is chance for rupture of small small blood vessels leading to a condition known as stroke kettle stroke and down thing because the rupture of blood vessel takes place inside the brain that particular part of the brain is cut off with the blood resulting in so suppose blood blood flow to the heart is blocked you might have heard about coronary uh, uh, block the study is blood flow to the heart is blocked no further circulation to the heart heart stops function in that way all these organs may uh, <coughs> may come across with functionless situation the flow of the blood is lost so a pressure is maintained in the body of an individual as well as an animal for the maintenance of normal body function next is bleeding bleeding from any area it may be a nose nose is the area where these animals are coming across with bleeding what is the reason a nose is usually come across with injury what is the reason eh huh? no these animals are running and the main uh, organ of weapon organ of defense is head we try to hit against objects so usually the this this post, this area of the head is hitting against an object during their run to different area so nose bleeding is common in case of dogs as well as in case of uh, horses because they are very running habits so they come across with bleeding from the nose but other than that they can also get injury by uh, any any teeth or injury on the wound injury on the body by means of a lacerated a long wound or a, a skin may be injured so a lot of bleeding may takes place in the body suppose i have told you a pulse is usually uh, felt on the front limb if so that area is ruptured or wound has take uh, <coughs> is sustained a wound has developed that artery is damaged and blood will be coming out very fast so if you look at the bleeding points you will be able to find out whether it is a bleeding from a artery bleeding from a vein and bleeding from a capillary i told you in an artery blood is coming very fast because of the pumping of the heart so bleeding from artery can be identified by means of spurts like that if the heart according to the pumping of the heart bleeding is also just like a spurt but in the case of vein a bleeding from the vein very very slow very diffuse very slow bleeding so from the point of bleeding you will be able to identify whether it's a heart artery bleeding and vein bleeding but, so which is more important harvesting which bleeding is more important both both arterial bleeding as well as venous bleeding is important 
Arterial bleeding is important, you have to stop it very fast. Hmm? It's for how to control the bleeding when artery. Because we are a digital pressure cannot stop the bleeding. If you release that finger, again it starts bleeding. So what to do? That's first stage. Hmm? Ah, apply a, a, a cotton, a thick cotton, and around that a bandage is applied with force, but it should not obstruct the bleeding to the uh, the, the <coughs> next part, which means suppose you are applying a cotton here and then a bandage, the pressure applied should not be too tight to obstruct the blood flow to the tip of the finger. That means by the time you reach the hospital, this area would be cold with the loss, loss of blood. So the pressure applied should be very, very, very adequate just to put a pressure onto the bleeding vessel. So in the case of a artery bleeding, it, you cannot stop the bleeding. It can be stopped only by putting a, 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 a suture, that means a ligature. That is the end of the bleeding has to be <coughs> controlled by applying a, a suture. So that can be done only by a, an expert. So make it controlled by application of a bandage and try to move the animal to the hospital. That is the main way of <coughs> controlling the bleeding. Next is, uh, so bleeding points has to be controlled by pressure. Next is choking. I have told you choking of the <coughs> esophagus. Esophagus is the common place where the choking develops in, in a dog during the feeding also or during the play with some other balls it may get shocked so it is better to remove the foreign bodies uh, as, po as <coughs> with regard to the uh, life threatening point that is if you choke the neck of an animal in the esophagus that may cause uh, obstruction to the flow of air through the windpipe that also resulting in loss of respiration Finally, animal may die of asphyxia or loss of hair, breathing into that. So if animal is uh, having chalk, open the mouth and sweep from side to side to see that any object is lost. If the animal is small enough, suspend the animal by his hip with the head hanging down. Suspend that. So that with gravitational force, the object may come out from the chalked area. And if the animal is bigger, place your arms around the animal's wrist. Close your hands together to make a fist just behind the first rib and compress the abdomen by pushing five or ten times. At the same time, alternate with performing breaths. Any air around the object is better than one. So at last resort, administer a sharp blow to the in chest regions with all these forces that may communicate, that may cause uh, the, the dislodged material or foreign body to be come out from the esophagus. These are the important methods by which these foreign bodies can be removed from the esophagus. But if it is enlarged permanently, what is the solution? Suppose it is, suppose it is large, even after putting all this procedure, if it is not relieved. What is the next procedure? So animal is very valuable to you. You have to seek veterinary attention. Otherwise it may die off uh, due to loss of respiration. So that's another point. So you have to go to the hospitals and find out if the, if the, the material choking, material obstructing the esophagus is very large, not able to be removed by your procedures. You take the animal to the hospitals. Another is fracture. I told you fracture is a break in the bone. Usually, when a, in a colloquial term, fracture may be termed as, suppose a, 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 frac a bone of the limb is fractured, it's termed as fracture of limb. Is it not? That is termed by any, any layman, fracture of limb. Suppose a fracture of this hand, it is termed as 
a bone in the fracture is termed as fracture of hand like that but when this comes to us it may be termed as fracture of different bones also so normally fracture is taking place in the bones hmm? uh, that is the fracture means if a injury of the bone takes place that results in the separation of bone into two pieces or it may be it may not be uh, <coughs> separated to but only a part of the bone is damaged the fracture but suppose a fracture develops in a in a working dog what is the final situation of the dog it will get incapacitated that it cannot work for a longer period of time so it's better to avoid all this type of fracture by uh, allowing the animal to run into different areas that is very important <coughs> you have a <coughs> um we sit to the dog sat here about 6 to 7 months back where these animals were suffering from hip dysplasia another condition hip dysplasia you know what is the condition known as dysplasia you might have heard about in the different classes hip dysplasia where the the bone which is uh, <coughs> uniting with this area is not at all fit properly because of this the animal is walking with with very difficulty just like if you look at the walking by the animal walking like a rabbit the moyle pogana vare irikum because of this pain at this joints especially it is seen in labradors and doberman and german shepherd dogs so when they put on weight so they starts walking but they cannot cannot release their leg properly they cannot flex the leg properly so what happens is they will not walk with the, with the with the limbs ex the flexed forces they will walk because of the pain here they will not flex the limbs they will jump like a, a rabbit in the first day of the this um, this uh, workshop you have seen a, a a dog show here all obedience show and one of the dog was having very difficult to sit hmm? and it will be difficult sit and difficult to and getting up so that is suffering from this disease because of the very pain at the hip joint so this is due to whenever there is hip dysplasia animal may develop a sprain sprain means uh, all the structures or the covering the joints will be damaged because of the very very poor fitment of this joint that is known as sprain or sprain or strain of the joint so all this condition may develop in case of a, a dogs so in case of fracture it has to be treated by uh, uh, by by veterinary attention but suppose a fracture is developed in an animal how to move that animal into the hospital that's also very important how to bring that animal that is when a fracture is taking place you should not worst not become worst because of your handling by the uh, handling of the animal to the hospital so how to handle such animal while bringing to the hospital for treatment so if a bone of piece if a bone piece is uh, coming out or striking out wash that area with water or saline because sometimes bone may be protruded out of the skin because of an injury a wound on the skin that is termed as bone coming out of the area its location so wash the area with water because in case of a animal fracture is taking place not in a very clean condition in case of a human being fracture is taking place the bone suppose the bone is coming out it will not be getting lot of much contamination on that dirt but if the animal is suffering from a a bone fracture where the bone is exposed it's come out of that original situation it will be <coughs> contaminated by lot of dirt everything so you have to remove the dirt by washing with water or saline and loosely place a dressing over the wound and wrap with tape apply a dressing and a tape is also put around if animal cannot be completely still for transport 
a splint is applied. Splint. Splint means suppose the fracture is here. So if you travel the animal with that fracture, it's again causing movement. That movement also creates pain to the animal. Animal will be struggling because of pain. So what you have to do is you put a, a, a stick. That is, suppose this is the joint, this is the joint here. The moment of the fracture is here. The moment of, of that fragment should be, should, be, <coughs> should be prevented. So a stick that has got a length that is connecting these two joints together. That is, these two joints should be included along with that uh, the stick tying to the surface. So that the moment that this joint, this area is prevented. That is the purpose of a splint. It may be a scale, it may be a, <coughs> a, a rod or paper or plastic or wooden scale or stick. So that can be applied onto that area and tie it without undue pressure. If you again cause pr pressure by tying, it may cause injury again. So prevent that. The, the <coughs> pressure applied for tying the a scale or a splint should be just enough to hold the bond fragments together without any movement. That is the main idea of putting a splint. <coughs> I told you the splinting should be always included, the joints below and above the fracture site, otherwise the splint can cause more harm. If animal is struggling or you can transport in a box, suppose the animal is struggling, you can transport the animal in keeping in a box without any splint, so that movement is restricted. And in the, in the box, don't apply any splint. That's also important. In the, suppose you are keeping the animal in a box, it is remaining there without any movement. So try to avoid splints. Suppose you are carrying the animal in a box. Splinting can worsen a fracture if struggling by the animal is uncontrollable. That is another important point. A wounds, punctured wound on lacerations. These are the wounds usually come across in case of a running animals. So during the process of a wound, some objects may enter into the body that may cause a, a disruption, that is separation of skin because of the object, sharp object that can result in wound. If an object is entered into the body to create a wound, that object will have to be removed first and wash the area with saline. Saline means, you know, it's just like a, a salty water. So say a, one spoon of salt with to a quarter of warm water, dilute it, saline. That is saline. Usually saline used for giving as a drip to a patient. But it is here, you can make it a saline outside and dry that food of the area where the wound has been formed and apply a bandage and transport to the hospitals. In case of extensive laceration, a lot of bleeding may take place. There also we have to follow the steps of ABC or for the CPR, check for any shock and apply a lubricant over the wound so that you will keep the hairs out of the wound and clip the hair around the wound and flush with saline and apply a bandage and allow the animal to the hospital. Another uh, condition I have already explained yesterday regarding the conditions of the ear. If the animal is not having any uh, preventive care to remove the waxes from the ear canal, that may get infected with a lot of uh, materials like uh, bacteria, fungus, or even ectoparasites like ticks or fleas. They may enter into the ear canal and they will, they will be the tilting and shaking the head to ward off this, this, this uh, organism. In the process of warding, the, warding away of all this structure, all this material, they may try to injure the blood vessel inside the ear canal, in the ear flap, leading to a condition termed as hematoma. I think some of the uh, dogs have come, out, come to our hospital for the treatment of this condition in the previous days. Hematoma surgery was done. So this is only requiring any, any first aid. You have to bring the animal to the hospital after the organization. Because suppose you see a hematoma today, this due to bleeding into the 
uh, ear flap. So the bleeding has to be stopped to operate that condition. So to, con to make the bleeding stop, it will take three to four days. Suppose you see a hematoma today on the ear, and you have to treat it by removing the blood already formed inside the cavity. So that blood has to be removed by opening the area and remove the blood clots and also suturing that area. So to remove the blood clot, it has to organize. The blood that is formed in the cavity has to organize, gets, gets dry. It will take about three to four days. So only after three to four days, a hematoma is operated. So you have to... Eh? Huh. See, the ear, ear, you know, is not as uh, hard as a bone. It's termed as cartilage. So I told you the blood is circulating to all the areas, into the bone also, but into the cartilage also it is. There is a cartilage inside the ear. So during heating, so just there they will try to shake, to ward off this organism, irritation. So during that period some blood vessel may rupture inside the ear flap. So that goes on bleeding, goes on bleeding without any control and that enlarges. See, in the case of a head injury, you might have seen head injury, uh, the blood vessels in the brain, they may rupture. So, since it's a blood vessel in the, in the, in the close cavity, it will go on bleeding like this. Just like this here, go on bleeding without any control. So, it has to be, con it has to be treated only by surgical means. That is the other option. Some animals may go into pond and they may come across with drowning and uh, such animals also requiring this type of CPR like cardiopulmonary resuscitation is followed in, in case of shock and uh, if the animal is suffering from shock you have to treat that animal in by expert uh, opinion. Injury of the eye, an injury that is occurring on the eye is very, very, that may cause, that cause uh, some form of disability in the animal for a period of two to three weeks time. Once the condition is cleared, it may have to be <coughs> put into work. Another condition is because of the fight between animals, the eye itself is coming out from the socket. It's a, it's a very serious condition. So such animals should be treated quickly. Because I, I body is exposed outside, it will be contaminated and as long as the eyeball is exposed, the recovery of the eyeball to a normal pre-disease state is very, very, very remote chance. So you have to be treated early. So these are conditions are occurring in canals also. And foreign bodies in the, the wound embedded. So suppose the foreign body is embedded in a in a muscle mass of an animal. Don't try to remove it, just cut the end portion of the foreign body and pack with a lot of bandages and bring the animal to the hospital because it may require sedation to remove the foreign body. Hmm? So that is also another point to be remembered as a first aid. He struck another is uh, animals which are bred in, in a high <coughs> cold conditions, they may suffer from heat stroke when they are put into work in a very summer conditions. The body temperature will be increased, their breath, everything will be increased, salivation and uh, difficult breathing, red mucous membrane. So the temperature may go up to 105 or 105 degrees, 106 degree Fahrenheit also. So it has to be protected by means of moving the animal to cool areas, soak in will and will cool uh, structures, uh, place towels around the neck, head and abdomen, and also the feet to avoid heat in the body. And also, the, so once the temperature is coming to the uh, normal level, you have to discontinue all type of protective machines. That means you have to check every hour the temperature of the animal while covering the animal with the cold structures. Next is snake bite. Snake bite also, that is a condition, that is a situation where you require expert 
uh, treatment. You can't wait for any any type of such uh, uh, measures. You have to give some the indication that suppose the a bite is on the face. You can see that the the, the entire face portion of the animal may be swollen because of the uh, toxin that is introduced by the venom of the snake. So that has to be <coughs> taken care of. And once you suspect a snake bite, immediately the animal has to be taken to the hospital because it may require treatment with anti venom and other uh, fluids, everything. Toxins are also ingested by the animals. So when they ingest the toxin, there also we will get salivation, a lot of fluids may come out from the mouth and the bleeding, vomiting, diarrhea, all type of uh, anxiety, everything will be there. So these are the symptoms, you have to get the expert treatment also. Burn. So this burn is also another uh, situation, uh, condition that may be causing the entire body structures are uh, dead because of the burn. And depending upon the degree of burn, the part of the surface area of the body is burned, the, the damage to the body is also increased. This is also a condition where I have already told you a, a situation known as dehydration. Because of burning, a lot of blood is lost. That may also result in dehydration to the animal. So you have to treat it according to the necessity. Abdominal injuries. Many many uh, working dogs are affected by abdominal injury. I heard that there is, a, there is a wild boar in this campus. Wild boar? Somebody has told me that they have seen wild boar while uh, they go for early morning walking. So wild boars are very, very notorious to this type of uh, working dogs. We have come across with a lot of this type of injuries in working dogs, police dogs. They have bitten by wild dogs, sorry, wild boars. So this may cause injury to the abdomen because of their teeth. Here the abdomen is not open fully. Only the, the superficial part of the abdomen is injured. Suppose if the injury is uh, very deep, it may result in uh, the, the intestine, everything is coming out through the wound. It is very fatal. If you continue like that, so in that situation also, you put the organ inside, cover with a, a very broad bandage and bring the animal to the hospital for further treatment. And chest injury is also very common in case of uh, dogs. Uh, the one of the important points that I have to be reminded is, uh, bear in mind is, chest injury, if it is very close to the ribs, it may puncture the muscles in between the ribs and that may even go into deep into the thoracic area and lungs can be injured. That may affect the breathing also. So in case of chest injury, it may affect the breathing if the injury is very deep. In such situation also cover the body with a, a broad bandage and cover it all together and bring the animal for saving to the hospitals. Head injury, as in the case of human being, head injury is also common in case of uh, uh, dogs that has to be treated according to the wound and the injury of spinal cord, spinal injury is common in, in case of animals. So what happens is whenever there is spinal injury, depending upon the degree of damage of spinal cord, the symptom shown by the animal will be different. If the severe symptom is severe, that may cause paralysis of the back region of the animal, paralysis. So recovery from that type of condition is very, very remote in case the animal suffers paralysis or develop paralysis. In conclusion, so in emergency your safety is the most important. But without you, your companion cannot survive, is it not? Okay. Prevention and preparation are the keys, keeping a first aid kit ready with all materials used in emergency. That's very important. Whenever these dogs are taken for outdoor duties, you can expect all forms of uh, uh, accidents. So you have, should be very ready with keeping all these uh, uh, materials in your first aid box. Mm -hmm. All type of uh, 
materials they need to be <coughs> taken into apply execute the first aid procedure approach and handle the animal very gently readily and strongly with confidence are the paramount importance with respect to any person daily with working dogs and providing animals with adequate shelter water and food is critical in the immediate aftermath of any forms of uh, emergency and treated or treating injured animals with first aid alone may not be feasible always and seeking the help of a veterinary professional yes their help is or their life is very important to the police force with this i conclude my topic any clarification any clarification Hematoma. Hematoma. That is a medicine cannot uh, was in a cavity. How? Uh, no, a cavity. How can a medicine can enter? That's already damaged. Very small hematoma. If it is uh, very small, that can be treated by application of pressure and putting a bandage, so that it will prevent further accumulation of. Hmm? The initial, stage. initial stage if you find you can apply pressure and a bandage but depending upon the gravity of bleeding depending of the uh, size of the enlargement you have to take a different medical or surgical options hip joint problem you know it is a congenital problem congenital means certain breeds are prone to this condition like uh, i told you uh, rottweiler labrador doberman and also german shepherd so, i will tell you so animal starts uh, from the puppy stage starts walking everything so when they reach a, a stage of 6 months you will see the problem because they start putting on body weight so this this joint cannot uh, withstand the body weight this starts symptom <coughs> so somehow animal adjust to this hmm? adjust to the means they will adjust to this uh, forms of pain by a uh, lot of their movements but by the end of 10th or 12th month a, a, a degree of a joint may form here hmm? they adjust to that movement everything so with that it is able to cure here because we have lot of cases in the in the dogs car also we have come out here because he was training for the last 8 months and they are finding it very difficult to go back to their the trainees are here they had to go back to their districts and how they can go back so we have corrected the feeding of these animals given exercise so exercise is to improve the muscle mass of this area daily they were doing exercise with passive flexion of joint releasing everything 15 minutes for twice daily so this this joint is the muscles are improving so that will protect this joint so that will prevent the pain at this area so they could release all this uh, animals to their the districts of the, the respective district of the kerala state <laughs> so that is problem that practice there is no practice you know after 10 or 12 months of age it will stabilized it stabilized ha practice on ha dosham alla any exercise kodukam once the animal is stabilized with this functioning of this or of this joint with all the food materials all the exercise it will not recur again the 12th month ke avumbodana idu kodalayite avada stabilize idu varya adu kayin shesham exercise kodu porpilla adhe samayam avada joint inde ella stability ke develop cheyum develop cheyidu kayin pinne varan saayatha koravana but you have to give regular exercise but the muscles inde weakness vannu kayin again it can it can recur
പങ്കെടുക്കാം ആ അതിന് പങ്കെടുക്കാലോ പങ്കെടുക്കാം ദോഷമില്ല ദോഷമില്ല പങ്കെടുക്കുന്ന എക്സൈസ് അല്ലേ വരുന്നത് ആ എക്സൈസ് കൊടുക്കാലോ അത് കൊടുക്കാലോ എനി ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ കേൾക്കണില്ല അല്ല ഓവർ എക്സൈസ് മീൻസ് ഓവർ എക്സൈസ് ഇനി കൊടുക്കുന്നത് ഇത് ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞത് ഈ ഈ അല്ലല്ലോ ഒരു മിനിറ്റ് ഇവിടെ ഹിപ്പ് ഡിസ്പ്ലേഷ്യ വന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ആ സ്ഥലത്ത് പെയിൻ ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കും പെയിൻ ആ ജോയിൻ്റ് മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ് വരുമ്പോൾ പെയിൻ ഉണ്ടാവും ആ പെയിൻ വരുമ്പോഴാണത് ഇങ്ങനെ ഹാബിറ്റിന് പോലെ നടക്കുന്നത് ആ സമയത്ത് എക്സൈസ് കൊടുക്കാൻ പാടില്ല ബട്ട് യു മേ ഹാവ് ടു ഗീവ് പാസീവ് എക്സൈസ് പറഞ്ഞാലും എന്താണെന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ദർ ആർ ടു ടൈപ്പ് എക്സ് ആക്റ്റീവ് എക്സൈസ് പാസീവ് നിങ്ങൾ ഓടിക്കുകയാണെങ്കിൽ എന്താ ആ ഫോഴ്സ് എക്സൈസ് അല്ലേ പക്ഷെ നമ്മൾ കാല് പതുക്കെ രണ്ട് ജോയിൻ്റ് ഫ്ലെക്സ് ചെയ്യുക എടുക്കുക ഫ്ലെക്സ് ചെയ്യുക എടുക്കുക ഫ്ലെക്സ് ചെയ്യുക അതൊരു ടൈപ്പ് എക്സ് വേറൊരു ടൈപ്പ് എക്സൈസ് എന്തെങ്കിലും അനിമൽ അലൗ ദ ആനിമൽ ടു സ്വിം നീന്തിക്കുക നീന്തിപ്പം സംഭവിക്കുന്ന പിൻകാലമൊക്കെ ഇങ്ങനെ മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ് വരും അതിലും അനിമലിൻ്റെ ഇവിടെ ഞങ്ങൾ സജസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്തിരുന്നു ഇവിടെ ഒരു 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 പോണ്ട് ഉണ്ട് അതിനകത്ത് ഒരു ചെറിയൊരു പോണ്ട് ഉണ്ട് അതിനകത്ത് അലൗഡ് ദം ടു വാ ഇൻ സ്വിം ഫോർ അബൌട്ട് വൺ ടു ടു മന്ത്സ് സോ ദിസ് ഏരിയ വാസ് ഡെവലപ്ഡ് സോ ദേ ലാക്സിറ്റി ഓഫ് ജോയിൻ വാസ് പ്രിവെൻറ്റഡ് എനി ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ Thank you.